This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. More on that later. Hello and welcome back to watching your favorite drama Zoomer journalist on the web. Ugh. Ugh. I found this article from the Cosmopolitan that came out yesterday about drama in the reborn doll community. To get right to the point, reborn dolls are a specialized class of hyper-realistic fake babies. I know it's a little bit alarming. I am just as uncomfortable looking at these images as you are. But reborn dolls have been a hobby for a niche group of people for years now. Despite the fact that most people have no idea what they are, reborn babies have grown an alarmingly large fan base from young fans on TikTok, with the hashtag reborn baby having 3 billion views attached to it. Now, I'll include the link to the Cosmo article in the description below, but as I read up and I learned more about this phenomenon, I realized that this shit goes way deeper than any of us would expect. So I say, let's buckle up and let's learn about some, some freakish babies. But before you do that, hit the subscribe button. I know about half of you aren't even subscribed. After this video, I'm gonna be talking more about the reborn babies on my He Said Us channel. So make sure you go check that out after this video. And thank you for the support. It means the world to me. I really am enjoying doing this. So before we get to the hot steamy drama, let's talk about how these dolls work and why they've captured the interest of just so many people on the internet. According to the article, these kind of dolls can cost anywhere from $250 for a base model to more than $5,000 for limited edition versions with hair strands hand rooted one by one and hand painted layers of skin. These babies have it all. They look real. If I walked out on one of these things in someone's house, I think I would have a heart attack. Now, despite the fact that this sounds like a very niche community, the reborn doll community comprises of tens of thousands of collectors and doll artists, with a lot of them having a pretty sizable following. Now, this article specifically talks about one doll artist in particular, who is a 28-year-old military veteran by the name of Kirsten Haley. In the article, it says, at first, Kirsten was unclear what her offense had been. She had been a doll mom since 2018, and she loves her 32 babies. Lavender, Leilani, Kinsley, Paisley, Bentley, Bob, and all the rest. I don't know why she named one of the babies Bob and another one Leilani. I think those are two different sides of the spectrum, but maybe I think when you make the doll, it, the name kind of just comes out of it. You just make it and you go, that's, that's Bob. That's Bentley. Now, Kirsten has a sizable TikTok audience of 600,000 followers where she shows off her different babies. Meet Mariana. She is so adorable. She creates role plays with the babies in her home. Your heart makes in dreams you. And sometimes she even brings the babies to Target or a park. And it's kind of like this whole culture. There's a lot of different doll artists that create tutorials on how to create the babies, how to care for them, and how to even role play with the reborn dolls to simulate real life with a baby. Now, before I jump into all the drama, show you guys what you're here for, I want to jump into a few of Kirsten's videos so we can get a look at what the average reborn doll influencer posts. Now, I will say I wrote this video, I did my research, but I haven't actually taken that deep of a look into the actual TikToks that people post about these reborn babies. So a lot of this is just as much a surprise to me as it is for you. So this is Lambie's nursery. This is like the first video that came up. Let's check it out. Squishy, squishy. Oh my gosh, what's in your mouth? Let's go ahead and pull this and it's crazy to me because I'm just like, how is the mouth? How does the mouth look like wet? How does the hair and the eye, like everything together is all squishy and like trying to stay calm as I go through this. 28, she, her, hobbies are healthy. Yes, they're dolls. It's time to say goodbye to the first reborn baby doll. Oh my doll. God, they like, like they're trying to smuggle this baby to another country. Say goodbye to the first reborn baby doll that I've made and have sold. So this also seems like it's sort of a process. Like you work with an artist possibly, or you find a baby that works for you. And then there's a whole... There's a whole process that goes into packaging this thing and putting clothes and a little note in there as if this is sort of like like an event or like a way of passage for reborn doll owners. I'm going to show you my morning routine as a van life mom. First, we wake up and we celebrate the Wait, day. She's a van life mom, too, and she does the babies. 
day and I go downstairs and I go grab her her bottle then I'm gonna take her over to the couch and go feed her her bottle while I feed her I'm gonna look out the window and just celebrate this beautiful earth we have oh no oh no I gotta go Dude, what's going on? oh I gotta see this one. Oh my goodness it's a very big day and introduce oh baby my gosh Lucy. Let's get this off of get that you. thing away from me. Welcome home, baby Lacey. We're all so glad to see you. Oh my... I think it needs a little bit of time to, to come out of the packaging. You know when you get like a new uh, bean bag and you take it out and it's got it's got to expand? I think that baby hasn't expanded yet. Now, I could get way deeper into this, but I'm going to move on just for the sake of telling the story. Now, the first question when a lot of people talk to these reborn baby mom the doll mommies. A lot of people ask them the question, why? And I feel like for a lot of people who are first looking at these babies, that's a pretty understandable reaction. They say that a lot of these doll enthusiasts get into this hobby just for fun, but there are like therapeutic reasons for why people get into this, like coping with pregnancy loss, for example. But on TikTok, a lot of people are learning more and more about these dolls and the community behind them because of a lot of little dramas that have stirred up in the community since it's become so popular. So let's talk about the first big drama. The first one seems to be about the bottle feeding of these dolls. There's been some controversy around the reborn doll community about people who are bottle feeding these fake babies, these dolls. Since earlier last year, we've been in a bit of a baby formula shortage in the US. And because of that, people begin to go on these hunts looking for different doll moms who were draining the supply of real baby formula so they could role play feeding these babies, of course. Now for Kirsten, she apparently bought real baby formula like three years ago because she wanted to make her doll videos feel more immersive and authentic. So she basically uses this baby formula in pretty small dosages with her reborn doll until she ran out. And then once she ran out, she started using a fabric softener as a fake formula substitute. The formula in the linked video, I had bought it three years prior, expired from a really crappy store that always had everything expired. It was really gross and weird. I stopped using expired baby formula and started using fake formula that looks real and is actually fabric softener. But this did not stop the mobs from coming to Kirsten's page and overwhelming her with messages claiming that she was using up the newborn baby products to fund her weird obsession, while mothers all over the country are struggling to make ends meet with their real-life, very fragile human babies who need real-life human baby formula. I also want to take a second and apologize. I started using a teleprompter today, and I'm still getting used to how to, like, talk and read off of it at the same time and not, like, constantly look down at my computer. So, so if things seem a little off in this video, then um, that's why. And hopefully I'll get better at doing this, but it is very different than, than trying to memorize what I'm saying down here. Now, Kirsten does say that she donates baby items to those in need to make up for the stuff she does buy for her reborn babies. And she doesn't use baby formula, so it seems like she narrowly avoided the controversy. It seems like she's doing exactly what she needs to do. But there is a reborn account called Mummy of Two Reborns that went viral for buying cans of real formula and denying that there was even a shortage when people called her out for it. And sucked into your head about all this formula shortage. Just because you might have to go to two or three different stores doesn't mean there's a fam and there's a formula shortage. Just could mean that they don't have the one that you that you feed your baby with. But they could have loads of other ones. So if you were feeding your baby cow and gate, but didn't have no more on there, you could buy the SMA. But you don't, because that's what your kid wants to buy, um, wants to drink and eat. So therefore, you have to go to another store in order to get it. it doesn't mean there's a fat and um, there's a formula shortage. It just means. They haven't got it in stock at the main moment. Now, Kirsten explains in this article that these reborn babies are an uplifting force that has helped a lot of people in her generation with the effects of trauma from things like 9-11, the recession, COVID. Long story short, millennials need help, and these babies might be the thing to help them. This article says that playing with reborns in her home nursery turns back the clock on Kirsten's generational despair, if only for a while. Quote, the stress will melt away, and it's almost like going back to a more innocent, better time, she says. Uploading role plays allows her to share that solace with others and build community. Almost everyone I've met in the reborn hobby, we all were the outcast at some point in our real lives. And that kind of makes sense to me, but reborn dolls being therapeutic for a lot of these people isn't enough to stop the general public from thinking that this is wrong 
in a lot of different ways. Now, there are still a lot of angry people fighting with these doll moms online for their use of infant baby wipes, children's medicine, and clothing. Now again, no kid over here. I don't have a dog in the fight. I'm sorry. My usual instinct for stuff like this is like, oh, um, that's, that's weird. And then I sort of just like move on with my life and I forget about it forever. But sometimes TikTok commenters can be the complete opposite. Stop right there. Let's take a second to talk about the sponsor for this video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN app and browser extension that lets you set your location of your phone and computer to anywhere you want in the world. So you can access the internet as if you're actually in that country. I recently toured for about a month on the road, and when I was in Canada, I couldn't watch my favorite show, Barry, on HBO. But I logged into Surfshark VPN. I set my computer's location to somewhere in the United States, and next thing you know, I'm watching season four. Surfshark has VPN encryption that adds an extra layer of security when you're surfing the web, so you can protect your passwords, your photos, videos, and all the emails that you've been sending to your secret admirer. I know you wouldn't want that to get out. Surfshark uses the same type of VPN encryption that the freaking US government uses. That's how you know it's safe. And it's also the only VPN that lets you use an unlimited number of devices on one account, so you can keep all of your information super safe. And super cheap too, if you wanna become just like me, you just need to click the link in my description and use the code NOTNICK for three free months of Surfshark VPN. Just go down in the description and use that code NOTNICK for three months free. Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the fun. Now, this article right here poses a statement that some people might have issues with. Now, one of the reborn moms in this article says, hell, it's easy to write off reborn obsessives altogether, but let's face it, there's some sexism in the instinct. My husband can play with cars, he can play video games, and he can play with Legos. And everybody's like, that's so cool, says Kirsten. But the moment I'm like, I play with dolls. I'm a weirdo who needs to have a real baby. <laughs> if we're gonna ask whether reborn collectors should be using baby accoutrements as playthings, we should probably ask whether anyone should be using anything that isn't 100% necessary or sustainable. Long story short, it's a hobby. Get off my dong. Now, although I see where the, the sentiment in this quote is coming from, I do feel like there's a slight difference between boys playing with Legos growing into men who still play with Legos compared to girls playing with dolls growing into women who own and role play with uh, hyper-realistic infants. And I don't mean that in an insulting or aggressive way. I'm not trying to like say that this hobby is a horrible thing, but I want to at least admit that I feel like this hobby is a bit a ways away from just playing with your childhood dollhouse, I guess. And again, that's not necessarily a bad thing at all, but it is like odd, right? It's odd. And let me stop the video right there because actually, while I was editing this video, I got messages back from a Reborn Doll account by the name of Pumpkins Sparkles Babies on Instagram, who has 111,000 followers, who is a Reborn Doll artist. Her name is Chelsea. Everyone say hi to Chelsea. And she's actually friends with Lambie's Nursery, the person who was interviewed by the Cosmopolitan, and she wanted to offer any help or uh, answers if I have any questions about this whole thing. And although I do have more to talk about in this video, I think it'd be interesting to insert the interview here just to kind of get an idea on what goes on on the other side with someone who is into this hobby and has a business with people who are into this hobby. And so the first question I had to ask her was whether or not she feels like the reborn community is more predisposed to drama, you know, for any specific reason. Does it feel like this community harbors more controversy or drama or fighting than any other hobby? Personally, the drama, I think it has a lot to do with these people wanting views um just like any other uh you know youtube channel i think the more bizarre that they can make their videos or their drama or you know their clapbacks whatever i mean that's how they generate people watching and it's just like anything else it's so awful the type of um backlash that women especially get for collecting baby dolls and it's because it's baby dolls but men can collect legos what else do they collect cars like miniature cars or like pop 
pop figures, whatever. But women collecting realistic baby dolls for some reason just automatically puts a stigma on you that um, they're crazy. But yeah, the formula shortage, the the um, the breastfeeding stuff, I just feel like where I'm coming from, you can do what you want. Honestly, they're your dolls. You do you. You make your videos. You get your views. Whatever. I mean, honestly, should just be worrying about themselves and, you know, there's enough drama and hate and disgusting stuff going on in the world just let people live their lives for real yeah so her response was kind of similar to something lambie said in the article which is what i just reacted to about the way that people online treat women who have these hobbies versus men who have hobbies with other things that they liked when they were younger and although it does seem bizarre and out of place i i do start to understand how these communities work and how people you know begin getting interested into hobbies like this. I think it would be a little harsh to say that it's way out of line for someone to grow up and be interested in realistic dolls, but a lot of other people might say, yeah, I mean, when we grow up, don't we just find interest in similar things that we liked when we were younger and now we're just doing adult versions of them? So I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Do you think that there is a big difference because of that? Or do you think that this is another common way that sexism can affect women who have hobbies but respect men who have very similar hobbies, I guess. And then the second thing that I wanted to ask her was whether or not she feels like being into reborn dolls is a weird or bizarre hobby on its own, and if it feels like it's an odd thing to explain to someone else, or if it just feels like every other hobby. As far as for, for me, I'm personally not a collector of reborn dolls. I am just an artist. Um, I started painting in 2018. I do a lot of birthmark babies and um, babies that have like different types of uh, therapy benefits. Um, I work really hard to get my dolls into nursing homes for dementia patients. Um, I also donate dolls to women that have lost babies. But yeah, I mean, for me, it's I like providing the the therapy aspect to it. I think it helps all people feel um, comforted. So yeah, it was interesting getting those answers. I'm, I'm putting them in the video pretty last minute because I'm making basically all of this today, but I do find a lot of interest in it and I wish I could dive even further into it. But I wanna give a big thank you to Pumpkin Sparkles Babies on Instagram. And I wanna give a big shout out to a fan of the channel that knows Pumpkin Sparkles by the name of Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Thank you for being a fan of the channel, and I appreciate you um, supporting me. How cool is that? I get to do that. I get to interview people online who, who do really weird and zany stuff. And yeah, as odd and, and weird as it feels to me, this is cool. It's cool to know that there is a whole ecosystem for this hobby and that people find genuine interest in it and find it genuinely therapeutic for itself. I think that it can be a positive force for a lot of people, especially because Chelsea, the, the person who runs Pumpkin Sparkles Babies, uh, Chelsea told me that she tries to get a lot of her dolls into homes for older people who have uh, disorders or are struggling from past trauma as well. So that's where I'll leave it there. I obviously will include more details in the He Said Us video, but let's keep moving on with the video. Now in the article, Kirsten's belief is that a lot of the haters online might just be jealous and maybe they wish that they didn't have children so soon and they wish that they were in Kirsten's shoes and didn't have to worry about a real life child. All they got to worry about is diaper blowout role play. Yeah, that's real. It's gross. But let's talk about the next drama that these these doll moms got into because it just just keeps going. Now, this time, the drama was actually in the community itself. In 2019, a vlogging doll mom put out a video where she breastfeeds a reborn doll named Gideon. She basically says that this could be used to dismantle the stigma that our bodies are sexual in nature and it can show that breasts are there to feed a child. It's a natural thing, of course. But there were a lot of reborn moms who were actually against this kind of stuff. There were people in the community who were saying stuff like, people have enough difficulties to understand and accept our hobby. We don't need to give them any more reasons to find it weird or deviant. Shallon, someone else in the article, falls more into the latter camp. I try not to judge, but with that, I'm going to judge just a bit. If we're talking about people who are reborn moms, judging someone over something else with a reborn doll is pretty hard to do, right? Like, it has to be tough to find something that crosses the line 
when your main hobby is like crafting these realistic babies. But there is a little bit more of a reason to not like this. Another Reborn mom was worried about this issue because Reborn dolls are resold and traded so frequently that it would basically be gross for people to do this and not disclose that they breastfed the baby to whoever they're selling the doll to. And the drama doesn't stop there, everybody. No, it doesn't. Um, there's another part of this article that says, in one video, an influencer role plays a scenario where a reborn named Benny has just come home from the hospital with RSV, which is a virus that is responsible for a one in 50 deaths of children under five years old. Benny lies face up in his crib, his chest and left leg stuck with hospital electrode stickers, a nasal cannula hooked up to his nostrils. With gentle efficiency, the woman takes the doll's temperature and bathes it with damp towelettes. I'm gonna try to do this fast, because he'll get chilled, she explains. Some viewers were horrified. Quote, to replicate a child illness is twisted, wrote one. Another fumed, a sick doll that was in the hospital? Really? The post creators did not respond to Cosmopolitan's request for comment. Now, a lot of people in the doll community felt like videos like this felt exploitative and that we shouldn't be creating content out of like medical crises. But on the other hand, a lot of doll collectors find stuff like this less bizarre and more therapeutic, giving these doll moms the feeling of sort of like saving the day or being able to be a caregiver to these babies. And finally, there's a lot of drama around fake reborns also. The original reborn dolls that are sold for for such a high amount have an insane amount of effort that goes into them. There's this kit that a sculptor makes for the baby and then an artist adds all these little details that makes it look so real like the freckles and the eyelashes and it's weighted to give the feeling of a real life chubby ass baby. This is a real business and a real hobby that people have and they make legitimate money off of this. But as this business starts to show real promise, of course you're going to have people trying to strictly profit off of this hobby. There's these cheap knockoffs of reborn and baby dolls that end up on the marketplace and if you're a seasoned doll mom you can spot them instantly and know that they aren't authentic but for those who aren't as lucky they might end up with a cheap inauthentic reborn doll so basically these people will get these fake dolls well fake fake dolls i guess doll they're fake already like inherently they're fake but then these ones are actually fake versions of those authentic dolls. So people get these fakes and they will post them and then a bunch of reborn doll moms will basically swarm them saying that they got scammed and their doll sucks and they suck for not being smart enough to spot it. And then some of those people who, who get hated on get angry and they start ranting about how these authentic dolls are elitist and how not everybody can afford to get these fancy ass dolls. And so then they have these new Facebook groups that are like more inclusive towards people who have inauthentic dolls also so, so they don't feel as bad. And then finally, I found this last part of the article pretty interesting. In rare cases, warring factions do make up. Not long ago, Shallon found herself in a public spat with a less experienced artist, someone whose Shallon felt was improperly packing her dolls for shipping and presentation. Quote, you're supposed to protect everything and kind of make it look cutesy, she explains. Shallon posted a video implicitly criticizing the artist who became deeply upset, Shallon remembers. So then I was like, well, you need to pack your dolls better. A brief but ugly feud broke out before Shallon had an awakening. Quote, we made like 18 videos back and forth battling over this, but she is literally the nicest human being I've ever talked to. They declared a truce and Shallon resolved to work on her communication skills, she said. Then I bought a doll from her. And that's kind of where this article ends and where the hobby of reborn dolls kind of continues to live on and exist. With every hobby, you're going to have those extremes you know you're gonna find those people that are out of line with what the rest of the community believes and so in a strange way this uh reborn doll like overall community slash drama kind of gave me a good sense of where these people are coming from in terms of having this hobby as bizarre as it seems the community functions in a way like any other hobby or niche will you're gonna have infighting you're gonna have people who think that this is the right way to do it and this is the right way to do it but the beautiful thing is that all of it is weird all the babies are weird there's not just some people doing it wrong and some people who are being weird about it and those who are i mean maybe the breastfeeding went a little bit too far but it is nice to see that Communities like this aren't just like TikTok trends that are freaking people out for a second. They fully exist and have an ecosystem 
all between themselves and people don't even know about it and i think that's kind of beautiful and at least that's where i'll leave the story for today i'm going to continue talking about it on the he said us channel i'm going to look at some babies look at their pricing see some of these accounts and just see how diverse the community really gets so if you want to continue watching me you can go over there i'll keep filming right after this video and i'm excited to look into it more thank you for watching this video if you're new here my name's nick i cover uh weird stuff that's going on in the internet and i think you should join me so subscribe if you enjoyed this video let me know down in the comments what you liked about it what you want to see me do next i usually post like monday wednesday friday ish so i'll be around and you should follow me on my social media at nick is not green on instagram and everywhere else i post a lot of things on my instagram story asking people to help me out with ideas for videos etc and i think that's everything so thank you for watching i'll see you over on the other channel Bye bye